Welcome to Myconic History Channel, where we're going to talk about the Israeli-Palestine conflict. But before we get into it, make sure you like, share, and subscribe, and tell us what you want to hear about next. Without further ado, here we go. So, the conflict. Yes, right now there is a war going on between Israel and Palestine. The United States is backing Israel. And I see a lot of commentary about the quote-unquote terrorist attacks from Palestinians and Hamas as if they're all the same entity. However, there's no real deep dive into the history of the conflict. So guess what? I'm about to give it to you. So, upon losing World War I, Britain took control of Palestine after the defeat of the Ottoman Empire, which was a mostly Arab Jewish minority. Britain was tasked with giving Jews a home in Palestine, which Jews considered their natural ancestral home, but Arab Palestinians also laid claim to the land. Jewish numbers greatly increased over subsequent decades with many fleeing Europe and the Holocaust. From there, tensions mounted. In 1947, the UN voted to split the area into an Arab state and a Jewish state. The Jews went for it, the Arabs did not. In 1948, after years of tensions and challenges with both sides, Britain leaves and the Jewish leaders swooped into the area to declare the land now the state of Israel. A war broke out and hundreds of thousands, 700,000 to be exact, Palestinians were either displaced or forced to flee. And when the quote-unquote war ended the next year, the land was mostly in Israeli control. Jordan occupied land known as the West Bank, and Egypt controlled Gaza. Israel was cleaved in half, Berlin style, Jordanian East, Israeli West. But more wars and blame-shifting occurred. In another war in 1967, Israel occupied East Jerusalem and the West Bank, as well as most of the Syrian Golan Heights and Gaza in the Egyptian Sinai Peninsula. Palestinian refugees now live in Gaza, the West Bank, Syria, Jordan, and Lebanon, having been denied a chance to return home by the Israeli government as they would be quote-unquote overwhelmed and the Jewish state would be threatened. Israel claims the whole of Jerusalem as its capital, while the Palestinians lay claim to East Jerusalem as the capital of a future Palestinian state. The United States is only one of a handful of countries to recognize Israel's claim to the whole of the city. To officially recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. Israel has encroached on their capital of Jerusalem for the Palestinians, and the Arabs feel it violates international law, but Israel does not see things that way. Palestinians in Gaza and the West Bank say they're suffering because of Israeli actions and restrictions. Israel says it is only acting to protect itself from Palestinian violence. Human Rights Watch has classed Israel as an apartheid state in a 213-page document. The 1973 Apartheid Convention and the 1998 Rome Statute of the International Criminal Court define apartheid as systemic and institutionally entrenched domination and repression by one racial group over another through, quote, inhumane acts, unquote. Such acts are, quote, arbitrary arrest and illegal imprisonment of the members of a racial group, measures designed to divide the population along racial lines by the creation of separate reserves and ghettos for the members of a racial group or groups, forceful transfer, expropriation of land and property, and the denial of the right to leave and return to the country, as well as the right to nationality." Unquote. In 1975, the United Nations General Assembly passed Resolution 3379, which declared Zionism to be a form of racism, later rescinded due to Israeli pressure. It is based on its equation of Zionism with racism on previous resolutions, including the 1963-1904 resolution that affirmed that, quote, any doctrine of racial differentiation or superiority is scientifically false, morally condemnable, and socially unjust and dangerous. After visiting the Holy Land in 2002, Archbishop Emeritus Desmond Tutu, widely regarded as South Africa's moral conscience, said that we saw in Israel's treatment of Palestinians reminded him so much of what happened to us back in South Africa. In July 2018, Bibi Netanyahu passed a so-called nation law through Kisnet, declaring that one, the right to exercise national self-determination in Israel is unique to the Jewish people. Two, it establishes Hebrew as Israel's official language and downgrades Arabic, a language widely spoken by Arab Israelis, to a quote-unquote special status. 
Three, it establishes Jewish settlement as a national value and mandates that the state will labor to encourage and promote its establishment and development. Today, Arab Israelis have a different legal status from 350,000 Palestinians who live under Israeli occupation in East Jerusalem. The 2.5 million who live in the Palestinian Authority-administered West Bank and the 1.9 million who live in the blockaded Gaza Strip under the rule of Hamas, which the U.S. and several other Western countries have designated as a terrorist group. Those Palestinian populations are technically stateless. This means that, for instance, Palestinians in East Jerusalem can't vote in Israeli national elections, obtain Israeli passports, among other restrictions. For Palestinians in the West Bank and Gaza, it means that major parts of their lives are controlled by Israel, a country they have no direct voice in. And now, people are equating Palestinians with Hamas when it's not quite the case. Palestinians right now are probably the most vulnerable of all the groups included right now. They have no resources, important needs being met. They are in a country that's not their country, being controlled by two groups of people who are having the say when they have none. So what do you think? Let me know in the comments what you think about this state of affairs. But this is the background of the conflict. Don't choose sides, just choose facts.